dear students welcome to lion raj mohan sir's channel in the previous semester we learned about 10 experiments where demonstration was done for fluid and particle mechanics laboratory experiments we were overwhelmed by the response from the students in this semester as well we are going to demonstrate the chemical reaction engineering laboratory experiments we hope that the students will be helped by this experience so without further delay let's get started In this chemical reaction engineering laboratory, today we are going to discuss about experiment number one, reaction kinetic studies in a batch reactor. So in this, saponification of ethyl acetate in a batch reactor will be discussed. So we are going to perform this experiment in a isothermal reactor. The aim of this experiment is, we want to verify that the saponification of ethyl acetate in dilute aqueous solutions is a second order reaction. And also, we want to determine the rate constant of the saponification of ethyl acetate with NaOH in a batch reactor at a specific temperature. What is a chemical reactor? What is a chemical reactor? It's a vessel designed to contain the chemical reactions. It's called as a chemical reactor. Actually, an industrial reactor is a complex chemical device in which heat transfer, mass transfer, diffusion or friction may occur along with the chemical reactions. Whereas in a batch reactors or small scale reactors, we are only concerned about the reaction that is taking place. But if you want to perform the same in a large scale, we, are, we have to take care of heat transfer, mass transfer also into account, right? Same thing, when we are cooking noodles for a small two people or one people in a hostel, it is very simple one to do. But if you have to make the same for 100 people in a mega mess, large mess where we have 1.8k hostel, so there and all if you want to make food for large number of people, will you be able to get the same taste and quality when we are making it in large scale? That is difficult, that is because there we have to take care of heat and mass transfer also into account okay so if you are able to manage a uh, same temperature uniform temperature uniform heat and mass transfer throughout the vessel then we will be able to get the uniform product right same thing with respect to chemical reactor also okay because these chemical reactors are playing an over important role in overall chemical process because this what is the conversion taking place what is the phase in which the reaction is taking place whether it is a liquid phase or gas phase or uh, solid phase reaction is there whether catalytic reaction or non catalytic reaction whether it is elementary reaction or non elementary reaction all this will determine what is the percentage conversion what is the selectivity how many byproducts are there what is competitive what is the temperature 
temperature and pressure uh, what is the rate constant all this will determine uh, what is the percentage conversion in a reaction right so based on that we need we will be needing some unit operations that's like purification step separation of the desired product from the undesired product and the unreacted reactants all that needs to be done okay so that way these chemical reactors are very important in a chemical industry okay so this chemical reaction engineering in chemical reaction engineering we learn about how to design a reactor for a desired conversion of a reactant into a product okay so in this we are going to see what is the basis of the reactor what is the type of reaction is used whether what is the need of a catalyst in a phase what is the mode of temperature and pressure control what is what pattern in which the contacting pattern is done uh, effectiveness of a chemical reactor and more importantly the residence times also right okay so if you want to classify the chemical reactors uh, the reactors can be classified based on the method of operation as batch reactors and continuous reactors okay so batch reactors is preferred when you want to do it something in small scale or high specialty chemical synthesis all that we use batch reactors but if you want to produce something in large quantity in a, because the demand is huge we have to produce them in large quantity so then we will go for a continuous reactor right similarly based on the number of phases involved it may be a homogeneous reaction or a reactor or a heterogeneous reactor homogeneous reactor is the one in which all the reactants and the products and the intermediates all will be in the same phase either it may be liquid or gas okay and the heterogeneous phase reaction means oh, the the raw material catalyst will be in different phases okay so that way the reactors can be classified based on the operation as batch reactors or continuous reactor and based on the number of phases involved we can call it as homogeneous reactor or heterogeneous reactor okay the equipment in which this uh, homogeneous reactions are carried out can be classified into three types one is batch reactors two steady state flow reactors and the three unsteady state flow or semi batch reactors okay so we are going to discuss about uh, batch reactors steady state flow reactors or continuous reactors or semi batch reactors in the chemical reaction engineering course so that theory part derivation so what is the equation that is being the performance equation all that will be derived in the theory course okay so if you look at the batch reactor what is the concentration change in concentration with respect to time and with respect to space if in case of a batch reactors the concentration will be changing with respect to time across the uh, with respect to time okay whereas in uh, with respect to space in different parts of the uh, different positions in your reactor that is in a space coordinate how the concentration will be the concentration will be same throughout because it is well mixed <laughs> okay even though it is a batch reactor we will having an agitator or a mixer so it will be making it that all the uh, solution or all the gases are in the well mixed in the batch reactor okay so in that case at time t equal to 0 you are going to have the same concentration throughout but it may be ca not but with respect to time uh, the concentration throughout the system will be same but it will be keep on decreasing right so that way the concentration with, re with respect to space in a batch reactor that will be uniform but it will be changing with respect to time and in and the concentration profile for uh, with respect to time is uh, with respect to time the initial concentration of the reactant will keep decreasing because it is getting converted into the products okay so whereas in case of uh, uh, continuous reactors we have continuous steered tank reactors or plug flow reactors where there will be the concentration will be uniform with respect to time at uh, locations okay uh, whereas in with respect to space in a plug flow reactor with respect to space along the length of the reactor the concentration will keep decreasing because conversion is taking place in a plug flow reactor the total fluid will be moving like a disk right so that inlet section you can just consider a pipeline the the, the total fluid is moving as a disk 
right the one disc is keep moving so that way it is like a batch like a train bogey that particular batch is keep moving from entry to exit so that the slowly getting converted from reactant into product so we, along with the space coordinate along the length of the reactor the concentration will keep decreasing and the concentration with respect to time at any location you can say at the x equal to 0 or x equal to length of the reactor or half of the length of the reactor it is going to be the same with respect to time at a particular location the concentration will be same with respect to time okay that is the case with the CSTR or PFR in continuous mode operations okay and what is an ideal reactor? We always talk about ideal reactors. Okay, so what is ideal reactors? So they are the ideal model used to estimate and optimize the designing, functionality, behavior and the technical problem that will occur during the chemical conversion. So there are basically two type of ideal tank reactors. We have CSTR. The ideal tank reactor is the one which is uh, in which the stirring is so efficient that the contents are always uniform composition and temperature throughout. As I told, the mass transfer and heat transfer are important when you want to do something in large scale in a continuous basis, right? So there, that way, so if you are able to maintain a homogeneity throughout in terms of mass transfer and heat transfer, then we can say it is an ideal reactor, right? So that way, yes, CSTR is a continuous stirred tank reactor where we are trying to say that we are efficiently stirring the system so that the, the composition everywhere is uniform and the temperature is uniform everywhere. Okay. Whereas this is similarly ideal plug flow reactor is the one in which the fluid reactant stream will move through the tube as a plug. As I told you if you have a compact disc CD we have no CD if you put through a pipe bottle how it will CD will move it won't move from are back the CD will keep moving like this right so that way in a PFR reactor also you can call it as an ideal reactor when the when the fluid is moving as a pack like a plug that's why it is called plug flow reactor as a plug the liquid fluid stream will be moving along the length of the reactor and never that one of the fluid which has move move in front will never come back okay there is no back mixing we call it as there is no back mixing of fluids within a plug flow reactor that is called ideal plug flow reactor okay and if you call, call this, so we have ideal batch reactor. So if you call it as an ideal batch reactor, what is the ideal batch reactor? In this ideal batch reactor, there is no flow into the reactor or flow out of the reactor. Okay, because this is a batch reactor. We initially pour something into the system, we allow the reaction to take place and we finally end up the reaction, we take the products out, right? So that means in the ideal batch reactor, there is no inflow of the reactants or there is no outflow of the products during the course of the reaction. This So this is like a fill in and shut it model. So we will fill the reactants, close it. We allow the reaction to take place, then we stop the reaction, then we withdraw the products out. So that's like it is a filling and shut in model. Okay, so that way we are filling the reactants into the system at the beginning and at the end of the reaction we take out the products. Okay, so as the reaction is proceed proceeding with respect to time, the concentration of the reactant will keep decreasing with respect to time and the concentration of the product will keep increasing with respect to time. And if you are able to maintain the temperature constant throughout the reaction system, reaction reactor, then we call it as a isothermal condition. So when you say isothermal, we are trying to maintain the temperature uniform. Remember, the reaction can be either an exothermic reaction or endothermic reaction. So in either case, if it is endothermic reaction also, we, we need to keep supplying the um, uh, heat to the system at a continuous basis still we have to maintain the uniform temperature in the reactor and if it is exothermic reaction also we have to keep removing the heat from the system right using a jacketed kettle will cooling cooling water circuit we have to keep removing the heat excess heat and we have to maintain a uniform temperature so that's what needs to be done in case of a uh, ideal reaction system okay so in a batch reactor the reactants and the catalysts are placed in the reactor and the reaction is allowed to proceed for a given time 
and the mixture is a mixture of unreacted reactant and products will be withdrawn at the end so we can have a provision for mixing may be required because if you want to keep a uniform uh, composition throughout the system obviously mixing is required so in an ideal batch reactor the concentration and temperature are assumed to be spatially uniform throughout so within the reactor at the top of top layer bottom layer if you consider in both layers the concentration is same temperature is same so that's why we call it as ideal batch reactor okay so all elements of the fluid and every element will be spending the same time in the reactor that is also important point for a ideal system ideal reactor okay so all the fluid elements are spending same time in the reactor so in a batch reactor there won't be much issue right so uh, there is because there is no bypassing there is no channeling kind of thing because we are feeding everything into the system and closing the door so there is no something escaping out in between right so that way so we are having uh, all the fluid elements in a batch reactor or ideal batch reactor will be spending same time within uh, same time in the reactor okay so that means we can call it as same residence time okay so that's why these batch reactors are very simple and they need little supporting equipments uh, we need just uh, isothermal condition to maintain we have a cooling jacket to make a homogeneous uh, homogeneity we need a stirrer okay so a motor with a agitator is sufficient to do this experiments right so that way the designing of a batch reactors are simple relative term it's a relative term in comparison to cstr or pfr design of a batch reactor is simple one and industrially it is used when relatively small amount of material are to be treated and the product demand varies right so we the because the specialty chemicals are there medicines are there high costly medicines are there okay nanoparticles are there so we, we don't produce them like we produce sulfuric acid or uh, uh, nitric acid or acetone okay so because the demand is different so the demand is small when you on us and when record we can produce small amount of this thing material so such type of uh, high specialty chemicals still industrially also we use batch reactor so it's not that say, only in the laboratory or chemistry labs we use batch reactors even industrially batch reactors are used when we want to produce a small amount of product okay so particularly in pharmaceutical industry as i said medicines are produced in this way so where the value is very high so we cannot there is no much demand for it but the value is very high such products are even produced in uh, batch reactors okay so if you ask me what are the advantages of batch reactors so as i said one is small instrumentation cost and flexibility of operation you can in batch reactor you can operate it whatever capacity on 25% capacity 50% capacity 100% capacity you, uh, you don't have much loss or economical considerations coming into picture but however batch reactor has some disadvantages or demerits so what are the limitations of batch reactors obviously it is laborious because it is a batch process somebody may have, we have to manually feed the thing even though you know this we can put uh, supply can be done but still it is a laborious right we have to supply then we have to run the experiment then to unload it we have to wait so another batch cannot be performed unless the previous batch product is withdrawn from the reactor right so that way uh, batch reactor have some limitations like high labor and it is very difficult to control the quality of the product quality control is uh, challenging because even though we say agitator is kept and we are mixing and getting homogeneity you are not able to able to maintain the homogeneity successfully as, uh, that ideality cannot be maintained and uh, there will be considerable shutdown time is there because you have to clean it we uh, as i said one load between one batch and another batch you have withdrawal time and then cleaning time drying time again refilling with the react and like that we have to do okay so that is when you talk about the design of any reactor the starting for point for all the design is the material balance right so material balance is of, can be expressed for any one of the reactants so what is that we can say rate of output is a function of rate of input kinetics and contacting pattern okay so that way this uh, how we will write the material balance the rate of reactant flow into element of volume is equal to rate of reactant flow out of vol- element of volume plus rate of reactant loss plus rate of accumulation 
ओके सो इन नॉन आइसोथर्मल ऑपरेशन वी हैव टू राइट इवन एनर्जी बैलेंस ओके सो रेट ऑफ हीट फ्लो आल्सो कमिंग इन टू पिक्चर सो रेट ऑफ हीट फ्लो इन टू द एलिमेंट ऑफ वॉल्यूम इज इक्वल टू रेट ऑफ हीट फ्लो आउट ऑफ द एलिमेंट्स ऑफ वॉल्यूम प्लस रेट ऑफ डिसअपियरेंस ऑफ हीट बाई रियाक्शन विद इन द एलिमेंट ऑफ वॉल्यूम प्लस रेट ऑफ अकोमलेशन ऑफ हीट इन एलिमेंट ऑफ वॉल्यूम ऑल्सो हेज टू बी बैलेंस सो वट आर द थिंग दैट इज वन इनपुट and for three outputs okay with respect to energy balance rate of heat flow into the element of volume equal to rate of heat flow out of element of volume rate of disappearance of heat by reaction within the element of volume rate of accumulation of heat in the element of volume so that makes the energy balance okay so we we'll able to write the energy balance uh, uh, material balance and energy balance and derive the working equation so for example and if you consider an elementary reaction of a plus b giving c plus d we can write the rate of di- disappearance of reactant a as a equal to minus r a equal to dna by dt right where na is the number of moles in a reactor at any time and constant volume condition can be assumed for most of the liquid phase reactions or for gas phase reactions if there is no change in number of moles okay so constant volume reactor can be assumed so you can write for this reaction you can write minus r a equal to k into c. if the two reactants are involved a plus b giving c plus d so you can write minus r a equal to k into c a power a plus b c b power b or a and b are order of the reactions with respect to a and b respectively so remember we cannot simply say with from the stoichiometry we can never able to tell whether the re- what is the order of the reaction that is uh, generally that uh, interview questions is asked okay so any order of the reaction we cannot simply say by seeing the stoichiometry okay so order of the reaction depends upon the uh, elementary reaction or non elementary reaction also okay so that way if we so we, we can generally we can say if we assume it to be elementary reactions if a moles of a plus b moles of b forms the products then rate of the rate equation can be written as minus r a equal to k into c a power a c b power b where a is the order of the reaction with respect to a and b is the order of the reaction uh, reaction with respect to uh, reactant b okay so that way when this order is equal to stoichiometric coefficient then only we can call it as elementary reactions when this a and b is not equal to the uh, stoichiometric values of the reactants then we cannot call it as elementary reaction so in that case it is non elementary reactions okay so that way we, we always determine the order of the reaction and the rate constant only through experiments and to determine this order of the reaction and rate constant we make use of two type of uh, integral analysis one is differential analysis and integral analysis which you will be learning separately in your theory course okay so this two type of analysis as i, re- I repeat integral method of analysis and differential method of analysis are being used so we will just collect it by performing the experimental data we will collect concentration versus time data once we have that data we will able to do analysis either using differential analysis or integral method analysis okay well the chemicals required for performing this experiment are we need oxalic acid we need hydrochloric acid ethyl acetate sodium hydroxide and phenolphthalein indicator okay so these are the chemicals required so we have to prepare oxalic acid Uh, solution of a standard oxalic acid solution for 0.1 normality we have to prepare hydrochloric acid 0.1 normality we have to prepare NaOH solution sodium hydroxide solution one normality and by dilution we will get 0.05 normality solution also and we have to prepare ethyl acetate one normality 0.1 normal solution so all are 0.1 normal and from 0.1 normal uh, NaOH we dilute it to get 0.05 normal in your voice also okay so that way we have to prepare all these chemicals and keep them ready okay then apparatus required are glass vase required are we need a codical flask 500 ml for performing the ideal batch reactor okay then we need a dozen of uh, conical flask of 250 ml because we will withdrawing sample every 1 minute from the um, reactor so when the reaction is going on we have to withdraw and take them so we'll have some 12 well, or 10 conical flask of 250 ml so to withdraw sample from the reactor we need a pipette we can able to withdraw 10 ml so 10 ml measuring jar 20 ml measuring jar 
and we should have standard EMF flask to prepare all these chemicals okay then we should have measuring jars and standard EMF flask okay so all that will be utilized in this uh, preparation of chemicals as well as performing the experiments okay the chemical required for the batch reactor 0.1 normal ethyl estate 0.1 normal NaOH 0.05 normal NaOH 0.1 normal HCl and oxalic acid 0.1 normal oxalic acid and phenolphthalein indicator these are the glass weights 12 conical flask 12 flask measuring jar funnel beaker and stopwatch burette burette stand that's it. Dear students, I am Dr. Mridusmita Barwa and now I am going to explain the animation of an idle batch reactor. What we see here is the basic operation of a batch reactor setup. Here we feed reactant A and B into the reactor. As soon as the reactants are filled into the reactor, we stop the inlet so that no more of the reactant is fed into the reactor. Thereafter, the stirrer is started until the formation of the product is achieved. Once the product is formed inside the reactor, the product is removed and the process is repeated. The cycle is henceforth continued until the required amount of product is formed. So this is the experimental setup for isothermal batch reactor. Isothermal means we are trying to maintain the temperature constant. So this isothermal batch reactor contains a reaction vessel. We have a reaction vessel you can see here. So this is the reaction vessel and we have feeding, for feeding we have a funnel set up and we have, uh, agitate, we have an agitator, so blade will be rotating, so we can adjust the speed here, okay. So then for maintaining the isothermal conditions we are having a cooling jacket, so cooling jacket uh, we have, we will be mixing that cooling water also using another agitator, so you can check the level of water here. So to fill the water into this cooling jacket, we will make you use of this. Now, this is a magnetic stirrer. This is a stopwatch. And this is pipette. Uh, this is a reactor for both the mixture, ethyl estate and NOH. Keep ready this one, 10 ml measuring jar. Okay, for the CRE laboratory, mostly we are going to perform saponification of ethyl acetate with NaOH as the reaction. So, mostly this will be the reactant and the products we know, you know the chemical reaction. Okay, so what we are going to do is standardization of this NaOH and HCl has to be done. For that, we have already prepared oxalic acid uh, solution and we have prepared a 0.1 normal NaOH solution and we have prepared 0.05 normal NaOH solution also, right. So, and we have 0.1 normal H HCl also. So, we will first take 0.05 normal NaOH into the burette and we take 20 ml of uh, oxalic acid and add a phenolphthalein indicator to it and titrate it against NaOH to standardize the normality of NaOH. We should be able to get exact value of normal NaOH as 0 0.05. If not, we have to adjust the concentration of NaOH to get the value within the prescribed error percentage. Okay. So that is what being done. First titration is oxalic acid versus NaOH taken in the burette. Okay. So then the second is again we will now determine the normality of HCl by titrating HCl adding indicator and titrating it against NaOH we get another endpoint. Okay. So this thing is done to standardize the concentrations right the normality we have to standardize. So once we are done with it we can move towards performing the experiment. So before starting the experiment, what we have to do is first to take 10 conical flask, 
Fill 20 ml of hydrochloric acid in each uh, conical flask. Add two drops of phenolphthalein indicator into it. Okay. Then we have a magnetic stirrer. We have a magnetic uh, rod which will be rotating when you switch it on. Then we have a stopwatch. Okay. And we should have a pipette to withdraw the solution from the system. Okay. So now what we will do is we will take we have already prepared 0 0.1 normal ethyl acetate 0 0.1 normal NaOH right so we are going to add equal amount of these two into the system so that way if it is a 500 ml reactor we are taking or 1000 ml we are go, 1 is to 1 ratio we have to add into the system okay remember 10 times at least we have to withdraw sample that means 10 into 10 100 ml will be withdrawing so it is better we go with a minimum 500 ml reactors volume Okay, so first to have 500 ml volume, 250 ml of 0.1 normal NaOH ethyl acetate and 0 0.1 normal NaOH has to be added into the reactor. The moment we add A and B, reaction starts. So parallelly we start, simultaneously we start the stopwatch and every one minute we will withdraw 10 ml of sample from the system and add it to the 10 conical flask added. Okay, so first sample at first minute, label the 10 conical flask also, add, withdraw 10 ml of the sample from it and add into the first conical flask and titrate it against 5 molar in a normal NaOH solution. So titration and note down the end point. End point is appearance of pale pink color. Okay, so similarly, uh, second minute we will withdraw another 10 ml of sample, add it to the second conical flask in which 20 ml of HCl and the indicator is added already. Once in the moment you add it, you immediately titrate it against the NaOH. So like that, 10 samples are withdrawn, 10 ml, 10 ml, 10 times we will withdraw up to minute, two, 1 minute, 2 minutes in an equal inter time interval, we will be able to withdraw the solution and uh, able to add it into the HCl and uh, titrate it against NaOH. So that way we perform the experiment and we stop the experiment after taking ten, a number of readings. Either we fix it out to be 10 minutes, first 10 minutes we want to know. So 10 readings have been taken and switch off the magnetic thing. And once we switch off, we titrate, titan titration has to be done, right? So we get the, uh, <laughs> what is the end point? Okay, so then we will move into the observation and calculation part. Okay. This is cooling water in there and we have a valve here which we have to close the cooling water jacket outlet. So we will once you fill this water. So now water is level is up to here sufficient. We have full water in the this cooling jacket. So now we will do the reaction vessel. We will fill. We are going to fill reactants into the system. So we will take 500 ml of 0 0.1 normal ethyl acetate. So we will take 500 ml of 0 0.1 normal ethyl acetate. So before that we take there will be a valve at the bottom, we have to close it. So first we rinsed with water and cleaned the batch reactor. So now we are filling it with reactant A, ethyl acetate. Five hundred ml of point one normal NaOH. Okay, so we are adding five hundred ml of another reactant NaOH. Okay. 
Okay, the moment we added this into the system, we switch on the agitator. So this agitator and isothermal condition is maintained in the system, 25 degrees Celsius, room temperature is maintained and this RPM agitator is rotating. So the reaction has started. We have to start the stopwatch parallelly. So with stopwatch, we start the time. Every minute we will be withdrawing 1 ml of sample, 10 ml of sample from the system. So we are waiting for the time. So I am ready with the stopwatch and uh, measuring jar to collect 10 ml of sample. So in the reactor it is difficult to put the pipette and take it out. So we will collect 10 ml sample from the bottom of this one. So if it is 1 minute, so we will collect 10 ml of sample from the system. So we collect 10 ml of sample from it. Then we, the procedure is same. So once we withdraw 10 ml of sample, what we have done? We take 20 ml of HCl. So what we do? In 10 conical plus, we take 20 ml of hydrochloric acid and we add 2 drops of indicator, naphthalene indicator. Then we add this reaction mixture withdrawn 10 ml into it and immediately we titrate it against a new oil solution ok so the procedure is titration procedure is same so we will do the we will withdraw sample for every 10 minutes so every minute we are withdrawing now 2 minutes off so we will open the valve we will collect the sample and we take the sample again so that way we have made what is the setup? This isothermal batch reactor where we have the reactor, simple batch reactor with a reactor. So we can adjust the speed using this. And we have a cooling jacket where the inlet water and outlet water is there. So we are main, we use another agitator to maintain to maintain the uniform temperature in the cooling jacket. So we are that way we are maintaining the isothermal conditions in this reactor. So every once we added we have both reactants, we are withdrawing the samples every minute, 10 ml from the bottom of this reaction setup. Okay. So this is all about this isothermal batch reactor apparatus. So once we have completed the reaction, we will stop the water. So carefully we will remove all the reactants from the system while opening the valve. Also all the cooling water has to be removed and kept dry. So you have to clean the reactor and leave. All this is made up of stainless steel but still we should try to keep it clean. Okay. So no water should be there or no reactant should be there in the system once you complete the experiment. So that's why we should take care of the safety precautions also. Okay. This is NOH pellets I am weighing. Alphabetic acid, Bay. How much you have to take? Um.
3.5 grams in 500 ml water, distilled water. Standardization of zero point zero five normal to in the which I am doing in that. In buret, I am taking 0.05 NOH. Okay. In conical flask, I am taking 10 ml oxalic acid. 0.1 normal oxalic acid. Two drops in after an indicator. Not at the first. Ten ml, point one normal. In that, two drops in after an indicator, and tighten it with point not five. Seventeen point five. So from this we take ten ml.
రెండుమీద ఆక్సిలిక్ యాసిడ్ ఇన్ దట్ యాడ్ టూ డ్రాప్స్ ఫినాక్టలిన్ ఇండికేటర్ టైటెడ్ విత్ పాయి నాట్ ఫైవ్ ఇన్ ఎవేజ్ using v1 n1 equal to v2 n2 formula we will calculate the exact normality of NaOH solution and we should able to get a value around 0 0.05 with plus or minus 0 0.002 if not we have to readjust the concentration of NaOH solution by adding either adding water or adding NaOH into it either if it is more or less particularly we have to either add NaOH or we have to add water to it to make the normality to be exactly 0 0.05 and using this NaOH solution we will determine the exact normality of the HCl solution ok now I am taking 0.1 normal ethyl estate 200 ml exactly 200 ml afterwards keep it side Again, I am ahead. Point one normal in OH, 200 ml. ml it 
Sita Illustrate, 200 ml in OH. Both. Before starting experiment, I fill 0.05 NOH in burette. Point zero five NOH in buret fifty ML I feel. Now this is a magnetic stirrer. Magnetic now for rotating. Rotating the both the mixture. Now. Hmm. What are you doing? Now I am adding NOH one. 200 ml and it will illustrate start the stopwatch every one more minute so you will be drawing 10 ml of solution for every Minute. Every minute? Mm. Every minute, I will taking 10 ml. See, 10 ml reactor mixture. So the time is now 52 seconds, 55, 55, 6, 7, hmm? oh, wait for a minute, you are getting early. Now second reading, I am taking table bed. This is one, two, you can tell it. We can, ah, we keep in order, single line. So, we can label the plane together. Mark. 
Oscar ke dengan Good Record. Example one, two, two three, three, four. Terima kasih. Okay, three days.
ninth reading. Now the last reading of Cats Reactor. Thank you. We have collected 10 samples. We have collected 10 samples. Treated with 5 mark by NOH. We have completed and we collected the 10 samples. In this, what we added? 20 ml HCl, 2 drops indicator and 10 ml reactor. In the reactor, we, we collected 10 ml. Okay? Now, we, now we are titrating with 0 .0, 0 0.05 normal NOH in buret style. Okay? Now, I am titrating first sample. So this is appearance of pale pink color. This is the end point. Similarly, we take it all labeled the 10 samples. samples. Okay. First one finish, now second one.
tentor. These are the 10 samples we recorded. If you make an observation table, so we have reaction time varying. So one minute up to ten minutes, we are going to have ten columns. So we are have to have uh, ten, uh, first minute, second minute, third minute, up to tenth minute. What is the volume of HCl taken in the conical flask? In ml, we know it is twenty ml for all. Amount of uh, what is the normality of HCl taken? It is point one normality. Okay, so that is also common for all the thing and if you take uh, how much what is the volume of the sample taken from the reactor it is common it is again 10 ml for all and we are, we are doing titration against the NaOH what is the rundown uh, in back titration what is the volume it is V3 we will determine through the Experiment obviously the amount of NaOH required to neutralize it is going to increase with the increase in time. Okay, so from lower and lower end point to higher end point we will be moving. So that will be there when you are doing the titration with NaOH. So the volume of NaOH required to neutralize it is back titration. Uh, we get value varying right so that ml we will be noting down and what is the normality of the NaOH taken in the burette we know that it is common for all it is 0 0.05 normality okay and what is the number of moles hcl initially present in the conical flask is 2 so that is the number of moles present in a 0 0.1 uh, normal hcl taken for 20 ml so 20 ml will contain 2 number of moles of HCl in it. Okay, so what will be the number of moles of HCl used up in the neutralizing the uh, this unused NaOH? We will determine. Okay, so that once you determine, also the number of moles of NaOH run down for neutralizing the excess uh, HCl will also we will note down. Okay, so on what is the NaOH in the sample? We will able to get from it. Okay, so that's what you will calculate from the observation table. Okay, so that is the evaluation of NaOH concentration. Okay, so this is what we do in evaluation of NaOH concentration. Now we have done the titration, so we have the information of concentration. So concentration versus time data we have. So again we make another table in which we make plot time versus, sorry first we make the tabular table uh, where we have time versus CA value, so 1 by CA and the CA square. So all that we will recalculate. The CA once we know, we can do what is 1 by CA, what is CA square, right? So that tabulation we can able to complete. The unit is going to change accordingly. Unit of time we are writing in minutes and the unit of concentration is moles per liter. So if it is 1 by CA, it has to be liters per mole. And if it is a CA square, it is moles per liter whole square, right? So that with along with that unit, we are able to do that table also, right? So then we go for differential method of analysis. What is differential method of analysis? We will try to plot the graph. So if you are preparing a plot of concentration versus time and decreasing curve will be there. So you will measure the slopes at different values and for different values of concentration CA you will get the slope value which is equal to your minus RA value. So that minus RA is there, CA is there. Now you calculate CA square value and you plot CA square versus RA graph. So CA square in X axis and RA in the Y axis. If you are able to get a strike line which will confirm you that it is a second order reaction. So saponification of ethyl acetate with NaOH is a second order reaction. So there is nothing uh, error we are going to get if you are assuming it to be second order. Okay. So this is what about uh, your differential method analysis. Next method is integral method of analysis. In this, 
one of the order is assumed then rate equation is written like minus r a equal to k into c a power n in this case we can assume it to be second order reaction and we separate and integrate between the limits of initial concentration at a time t equal to zero and any concentration c a at a particular time t then we integration we get an expression so we plot a curve between a function of concentration versus time in this case 1 by c a versus time and then we proceed to get the result what we will do is we have minus dca by dt data and if you have a reaction now minus dca by dt k into c a square assuming it to be a second order reaction separating and integrating you will get a final equation which will be of the form 1 by c a equal to 1 by c a naught plus k into t so which means that if you are plotting a graph between uh, time versus 1 by c a value we will get a graph with a slope where the slope will give you the rate constant k and the intercept will give you the inverse of uh, initial concentration so you will get 1 by c a naught value and you will get k value from the graph if you are plotting time versus 1 by c a graph okay so 1 by c a versus time we will get a slope which gives us the k value we will get an intercept which gives us the c a naught value okay so thereby we will able to report you the k value which we have obtained by both differential method of analysis and integral method of analysis so in the, it involves graphing plotting graph skillfully you have to choose x axis y axis accordingly and you will able to plot the graphs okay so in, in introduction class uh, it is explained how to plot the graphs using differential method analysis and integral method analysis also please refer to that okay well we have completed the experiment now we have to write the results and inference so what do you do we have performed the experiments and you will write what is the rate constant for the saponification of ethyl acetone using an AOH solution at a given temperature okay so you will report the k value which will have the unit according to the second order unit rate constant okay and we will be able to discuss and conclude what is the order of the reaction what is the activation energy uh, frequency factor also can be written okay the values for practicing the calculations please plot the graph write your results and inference and submit your file to us summary well in this experiment we have performed saponification of ethyl acetate with NaOH and we have taken equal amount of 1 is to 1 ratio of ethyl acetate and NaOH in a beaker and we magnetically stirred it ok so we withdrawn samples for every one minute a 10 ml of sample was taken which is added to 20 ml of HCl and using indicated phenolphthalein it is titrated against 0.05 normal NaOH the endpoints were noted from the endpoints we got concentration value once you have the concentration versus time data we used differential method analysis and integral method analysis to determine the rate constant value in the process we have even verified that it is a second order reaction we sincerely acknowledge the contributions of dr vidyasagar dr manogar and our current cre lab in charge dr ramya araga for contributing to the CRE lab development. We also acknowledge then HOD Professor Sarad Babu, Professor Shirish Shonavani and our current HOD Dr. Srinath for their kind support. Thank you so much for joining my classroom. Meet you in another video with another experiment in CRE laboratory. Bye bye.